saw the pistons and see oh the the piston holding tool working beautiful it doing the job it's not your expensive thing it's just something you see that we made it up it's simple but it getting the job done and getting it done effectively we have a few tools because each phase of the repair we change out the tools because we don't want too much tools just spread out over the place so now we we'll actually bring a rubber hammer which we need this to knock the piston in and we have the piston ring squeezer and we'll need a top wrench and a regular ratchet just to rotate the engine the crank is in and it's it's rotating good and just about to put the pistons in this is the direction to get to Technics Auto and we're using TCD here we're going past the TCD and we're going to take a right on the Cold Street right here Street, we're going to take a left. And onto King Street, now we turn right onto Curvin Avenue. This is Techniques Auto. If you notice, I have the engine block on the workbench. I'm using a, a polished stainless steel workbench because this bench would, you know, it, it's good at not keeping dirt and dust and so on. In, in many, many of the big companies, you always find a engine stand that you will be on the floor and you bolt the engine block to it and you build the engine there but you have other ways to do it and this is another way where i'm actually going to build the engine on the workbench without an engine stand because if you're a young mechanic you normally don't have all the tools and the most expensive tools so this is a simple way to build the engine and build it on any workbench and what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate the engine to the side and then we'll just get something to put under here so it even up so this become level and we're going to have it like that that way we'll have access to put the pistons in and at the same time we can navigate the connecting rod and secure the bearings and so on so we're going to move to that phase now and just position the engine block in the way we want to work with it. So this is a piece of just a regular piece of wood here and it's like about five inches and this is all what you need to, to 
build the engine on the workbench in terms of positioning the engine block so you can put the pistons in. And all I'm going to do is just up here and then put the engine, put it underneath the engine like that so it will bring it up to a certain height. So let me go ahead and do it. Okay, so we we'll have the engine in the correct height now. The next thing we're going to do, because before we have the front of the engine in this direction, but because of the dipstick, we can't keep it that direction because this would be done in the bench. So now we're going to rearrange the pistons so the, the front, with the front of the engineer, the number one piston going to be in this direction. And not just that, I'm turning it in the direction that the piston is supposed to go in the engine block. So now the piston is in the same direction. So now it's number one, number two, number three, number four. The next thing I'm going to do now is arrange the piston ring. Whenever you reach at this stage, don't matter if it's original rings or don't matter how you're 100% sure you added the correct parts, you want to actually put the ring in the cylinder and check the clearance to make sure you have the correct amount of rings gap clearance because if it's not correct when the engine start and the ring expand then the gap will close and that will seize the engine up this is our piston rings here, the new rings okay so I'm just checking the specs here for the end gap and see it right there, piston rings, end gap top rings so we'll actually install the second compression ring second groove compression rings and it's saying it should be 20 tau so let's go with a 20 tau and see so i'm looking for a 20 tau right now it's not a racing engine so two tau or one tau is not a big deal now I'm going to install the piston rings and connecting rod bearings. But before I get to that, there's an important note here. Remember in the parts of the video we was talking about, I think it was an earlier who asked about quantity, if, if quantity was important. And I tell him yes. And what happened here? We order one set piston. We order a set of piston rings for four pistons. And the supplier send a set piston rings, which is this is a set where it have number one groove, number two groove, number three groove oil rings and the two compression rings. So that's one set. But we needed it for four pistons and they only sent one set just for one piston. So we needed to stop the assembly of the engine block and wait for another three set to come. So this is a clear example where you have to know when there is a set, how much should be in the set, and which supplier would send more than one in a set or just a single set. So now we're going to move to putting in the pistons and stuff, and this is our holding tool that I made up. 
it's working beautiful, it's just made out of a wood, but what that will do, this tool will allow me to install the piston rings without putting down the piston on the side and getting the, the, the gaps out of shape or out of position. So I'm just going to take this last set out. And there we are, so we have the, we have the, the piston rings for all four pistons now. This is the connecting rod bearing. So. And you want to be very careful with these bearings. Uh, they easy to damage and just a slight scrape will damage them. So this is the new connecting rod bearings so as I explained before you always want to use the front of the engine as a reference it's the front of the engine so I'm starting with number one piston and I have a mark in there signifying number one the first thing I'm going to do is put in a set of bearings And I'm going to just keep some solvent close by, just in case I need to wipe something. In the back of the bearings, I don't need any, any lubrication. And if you notice, I'm making sure the lip inside where it's supposed to go and you want to follow standard procedure one one locking lip another locking lip and the two of them work together to lock each other you don't want to put it like that because you might make accident and you know it go close up the wrong way you want to always keep it the correct way and we're not going to force it up. We're going to just leave it a little bit loose so that we have easy access when I'm ready to install it in the engine block. Now I'm going to move to the piston ring. Quite windy. So the first rings going on is the oil rings and I'm going to take out the expander. I'm looking for the lock for the expander. So that's the lock, the lock there for the expander. So I'm making sure the expander go in back. Then I'm going to install the gap in the piston rings, the, the, the opening. We're going to install it on the opposite side of the expander. And also some engine, the piston rings might have a special way to turn top or turn bottom. So you want to look if you see any marking, any letter, you don't necessarily have to mark top. As long as it has a letter or any form of marking, you put that towards the top of the piston. 
if it have nothing then it mean it can go either way so with this piston rings here there's no marking on it so this means this rings can go anyway and also you have the instruction sheet here that telling you if it have a mark on where it, the mark should go so you have to be very careful with this because you don't want to break one so I'm going to just first of all let me take this gloves off okay so I, I needed to take the gloves off because I need to get a better grip with the piston rings I don't want it break and also I don't want any small pieces of the gloves to come off and get stuck between the piston rings so even though I don't want my hand grease up I prefer to do it without the gloves so again I'm going to have to double check just make certain and you could see the groove slide around just a little bit so I want to center not the groove, the, 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 the lock for the expander so I want to just center it up back so I know it's right there and I'll keep it in position and remember this oil rings it can go either way it have no marking and I'm double checking just to make sure so in this part of the work you just can't check too much so now I'm just opening up the two side, side of the piston rings and I'm slowly going over and I want to make sure that that it's going to groove properly and there you are so I know it's in the groove good because it's moving freely in the groove and remember all the piston grooves was dirty this is the reason why we have to clean them up properly so we want to get this free movement of the piston rings okay my the next rings I'm going to put on are going to be the number two compression rings which would be this one and again I want to make sure I want to make sure if there's any marking and there's no marking yes this have a marking right there it's so small you can't really see that good but it's right there so this telling me this go to the top and even without the marking you could see this have a slight groove right there so this would be a scraper groove so you would normally turn it down anyway even without the marking and there again I'm going to slightly open it out the two end of the piston ring uh, expanding them but you can't expand it too much because you don't want to break and you don't want it stuck in one end in the top groove and one in the bottom groove okay so there we go again and it moving nice and smooth in the groove but we want to check just make sure it going down in the groove when you do use and use piston, this is just one of the process you have to go through. And now I'm going to install the top groove and I'm actually turning the piston around because I'm doing them 90 degree apart. And this is actually a stainless steel ring with tarps iron. And there you see it off the top right there you just about can see it right there so that section need to that marking need to go in the upward position and I'll just double check 
and there them is again. This rings is a little bit more difficult, but you still have to be very careful because it of the stainless steel. Okay, so there we are. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just put some oil in the groove for lubrication purpose and also to keep the rings in position so they're not moving around freely until I'm ready to install it. And I'm just double checking it again. Okay. So there you go. One piston is completed. I'm going to put it back in the tool. There you go. So that's number one piston of the Conrad bearing and the rings installed. Now we're going to move to number two. And it's the same process again. We're going to start by removing the camera there. Move the camera there in the cap. this way we don't force it down because it have a little dowel area here that it have to fit tight up again so that's why I would not want to put the put it all the way down until we're ready to install it in the engine and there you go again I'm going to make sure I'm keeping the two end flush but the locking lip is inside the groove in the cap cover and the connecting rod cap and I'm doing the same thing again and notice how I'm putting it in I'm starting by putting in the groove first then I'm going to slide it around And I, and I do a few checks here, but I do it so quick, I have to explain it to you. So while I was sliding it round, I actually doing a measurement check here, just to make sure it's flush. And I also observing the two edge to make sure it's going in straight. Because we don't want it going crooked and make the bearing get out of shape. And again, we're going to make sure that the two, the two locking lips is on the same side. Because this bearing is an insert bearing and you don't want the, the bearing to be rotating when the engine starts. So that's why they have this lock right there and right there. And the two of them work against each other to lock the bearing in position. Thing. Normally with these rings you want to give them a slight little rinse off just in case there's any debris any debris from the from the factory. So I'm putting on the expander again 
and I'm putting it in the position where I can go on the opposite side. And then I'm looking if there's any mark. And there's the mark. So gotta make sure the groove go down. And the mark in the top. Actually I need double check. Because my attention just drift for a moment. My concentration drift for a moment, so I got to double check on the the, the the locking lip is right there. Some piston rings, they actually have a color on it, so you can actually identify where it is at all time. And there again, I'm going to expand it. And I'm making sure it go in the two groove. Then I'm going to just slide the expander in, and that's it. Then I just rotate it a little bit, just to make sure it's in properly. So now I'm going to install the second groove. And again, you have to double check and make sure the marking on the rings, either it mark top or have a letter or a number, anything, any form of writing, you put it towards the top or the crown of the piston. And again, you want to be very, very careful. So, this is how I'm, I'm going to put it on. So, I'm going to expand the tool end. And while I'm expanding it, then I use these two fingers and pull it over slightly. And I'm using this two big finger to carry it down and it actually lock in two grooves just now. But I get it over without it stuck. So now I have it in the groove complete. And then I want to make sure. And if you go like that. And this is what I want you to understand. You could stand up over somebody and watching them work and you wouldn't learn a lot of this thing here unless they explain it to you. Because I'm doing so much different thing at this moment but you only see I put the rings on. What I'm actually doing also is come with the camera a little closer I'm actually checking in a split second that I put the rings on I actually moving it like that this this way just to see if there's any movement whatsoever because i'm still checking the piston if everything is okay and it's nice and firm you can see it, it can't go anywhere it's nice and firm but it moves freely when i bring it in and out so this telling me the piston groove is good because ladder engine after so many miles, the piston rings will, the groove, which is the cutout in the piston, would wear out a little bit bigger. And there is the right end. And there again, I put it on, and I go in, and at the same time, I use my four fingers and give it a sideway check. So I'm in, in in and no movement at this moment I'm going to double check the position of the rings and I want it to be 90 degree apart so we have one right here one right here one right here this one actually need to come around a little bit like that and if you remember when we pull the engine down the piston rings all the groove was straight together so that's one problem with fixing 
with this insulation. Then I'm going to put it back in the piston holder and notice I have an arrow but the arrow pointing that way. But always using the front of the engine for a reference. So I'm going to turn it so the arrow pointing towards the front of the engine. Then I put it in the piston hole. And I'll just repeat the process with the other two pistons. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and recommend it to a friend. And if you're in the neighborhood, feel free to stop by and have a conversation. Or if you just want to send us your question or comment, we will show a reply in our next video. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.